Tell me you followed this. All right. So watch. Just remember that T help herself thing. Guys, just remember that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut through some steps and then just get right down to it. All right, so I'm skipping the T helper part getting activated. So watch, watch. Here's a pathogen. And what makes it a particular pathogen is based on its receptors. Take me to your leader. Are you with me? Now watch. When a B cell comes in contact with a specific antigen or pathogen, it matches up receptors. So when that B cell comes in contact with that pathogen, it gets turned on and it divides into what? Guys. Plasma cells and memory cells is very important. What do the memory cells do? They remember what you came in contact with. The plasma cells then begin to secrete specific proteins. And these specific proteins have a name. What are they called? They're called antibodies. Are you with me? And then these antibodies, which are big proteins, circulate around in the blood and the lymph and the interstitial space and they will attack and destroy or at least mark for death the specific pa uh, pathogen. Guys, tell me you got that. This is critical that you get this. It's critical that you get this. On your first exposure to something, do you have any B cells that are sensitized? No, you don't. So this process of forming B cells and then forming memory cells and then secreting antibodies takes a while. Sometimes it takes weeks. In the meantime, this particular pathogen is going to infect your cells and you're going to get sick. Tell me you got that. But the next time you're exposed, what do you have lying in wait? You have those memory cells. So if you are exposed to the same pathogen again, these memory cells will divide into plasma cells, and not just one, but thousands of plasma cells. And I'm making this up. On your first exposure, you produce 100 antibodies in two weeks but you get sick, right? But now what do you got memory cells? So if you're re-exposed to that same pathogen, instead of producing 100 antibodies, you produce 100 million antibodies. And those 100 million antibodies are not produced in two weeks, but sometimes in a few hours. So they can attack and destroy that pathogen before it infects any of your cells. Do you follow that? So your immune system right now is doing that and you don't even know it's doing it. It's kind of like the CIA, right? You don't know they're doing anything. 
Maybe they're tapping your phone or recording you not reading the textbook. It's a federal offense. How many people got that? Now watch. When they give you a vaccine, they're giving you what causes the disease. And it's either dead or attenuated. So you can't get flu from the flu virus, the flu vaccine. You can't get flu from the flu virus. Are you following me? How many people here have kids, little kids? Did you have to get your kid vaccine? Yeah. Vaccine? Vaccine innated? Yeah. Right? And they'll tell you, watch, they'll tell you, he may get a little cranky and he may develop a low-grade fever, so alternate Tylenol and ibuprofen, right? Because anytime you're exposed to a pathogen, you're going to get those chemoattractants released by white blood cells, and that can cause a low-grade fever. Say yes. And you may get muscle aches and stuff, right? And that's because those chemoattractants stimulate pain receptors. Tell me you got that. Guys, yes or no? Nobody's. How many people followed that? Yep. So if you get a vaccine, this process takes place. So what do you produce as a result of being exposed to a vaccine? Memories. You produce memory cells. So now if somebody hacks a loogie on you, what do you have lying in wait? So you will produce that immune response and those antibodies quicker and much more and will attack that virus or bacteria before it can attack you. Say yes. How many people have had to get the TB test, the skin test, right? Watch. They don't produce, they don't inject you with the TB bacillus, the TB bacterium. They take, remember, the immune system responds to the proteins on its surface. So what a guy did at Abbott Laboratories, he took the TB bacillus, went outside, tied a string, and then went like this, spun it around. And then all the proteins on the protein coat of that bacterium, they separate those, and it's called a purified protein derivative. That's why you have PPD, and that's what they inject underneath you, your skin. You're following. Now watch. If you have never been exposed to the TB bacterium, do you have sensitized B cells? No. So you will not get a reaction. But if you have been exposed to it, antibodies are going to go there, white blood cells are going to go there, release prostaglandins and interleukins, and it will cause that area to become red and swollen. That's how it works. Did you get it? Where, where are you from? I got that chapter. You got the BCG. The BCG is a vaccine, not given in the United States, but typically around the world against uh, TB. So if you are from another country and you got the BCG vaccine, no one should ever give you that PPD test, ever. If they do, it's going to blow up like a freaking balloon. Why did they do that to you? No, I had a COVID test. Right, and that's what they will do. I What's that? You got the um, BCG vaccine? Yeah, you don't know. You better find out. Oh, did they do the PPG? Yeah. Or the, uh, the PPD? Yeah, and it came back normal. You probably didn't get the BCG done. Mm -hmm. Tell me, guys, you got that. Guys? Do you? So you can, you can explain how a vaccine works. Yeah, that's all you're going to say. 
I'll be happy to flunk you. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Watch, watch. The flu virus is dead or attenuated. So it can't infect your cells and give you the flu. Do you follow that? Now, the one that they give nasally, that's a live virus. So you can, in fact, get the flu from that. Also, the smallpox vaccine is a live virus. So you can get the smallpox from the smallpox vaccine. That's why when there was, they worried about that biological terrorism over in Iran and Iraq, and they were wanting the soldiers to get the smallpox vaccine. If you're old enough, if you, you guys aren't, I'm old enough where I, I can't, I can't remember. It's, uh, you'll see like a little round thing like on your parent's arm. That's the smallpox vaccine. Right. If you're young enough, because smallpox was eradicated, they don't give you that shot. It was like a giant gun, and it shot you, and it hurt, and I cried for, I bet you, a, a year. I mean, nonstop. You know, everybody has that. Every baby has that. What's up with this girl with chicken pox and shingles? So if you get chicken pox, will you get the shingles? Yeah, you can get the shingles. Even if you don't get, no matter right. what, you can get the shingles. Watch. If you didn't get a um, really bad case of the chicken pox, um, your immune system doesn't build up a huge antibody response. So what can happen is the chicken pox virus, the herpes zoster virus, can lie dormant in spinal nerves. And then let's say you get some stress in your life or you get sick where your immune system is compromised, then your immune system is like the prison guard. It says to that chicken pox virus, hey, you stay in there, buddy, and don't cause any problems. But if your immune system is distracted because you're sick or you're stressed, then that chicken pox virus can't... Can you be immune to the chicken pox? What? Can you be immune to the chicken pox? Once you've had it, you're considered immune. Because I know I've had it, and my mom, when I was a kid, she put me next to people with them like, more than once, and I never got it. I just lived with my two cousins that they were both infected. Stuff, I don't I know. I don't know. But um, watch. I forgot what I was going to tell you. Oh, spinal, spinal nerves innervate specific parts of your skin. You got me? So when you get shingles, the herpes zoster virus takes over, and as a result, it will cause uh, your skin to start blistering, and it's in specific areas of your skin. So you can actually literally like draw like a line out over the area that it's infected because the nerve uh, innervates that particular part of the skin. So it causes inflammation of that nerve and then the blistering of the skin. Once the skin starts uh, crusting, you're not infected anymore. But uh, up until that time, you can spread that. So that's why they're encouraging people um, over the age of 50 to get the um, shingles um, vaccine. And watch, watch. Watch. How many people, when you're going into clinical, you had to have your uh, blood drawn, right? Because you had to see if you were immune to measles, mumps, and rubella, MMR, and then they did the herpes zoster because a lot of you got the chicken pox vaccine. So what they do is they actually measure antibody levels, and antibody levels are measured in, uh, it's called a titer. Right, and the CDC has determined that this is, a, this is an acceptable level of antibody protection, saying that you're immune. If you're lower than that, then what you'll do is you can get a booster shot. Say, yeah. Does that make sense? And is it important if you put the vaccination more than once? Was it? If you put the same vaccination, the vaccine, more than once? Yeah, you can get it more than once. That's a booster shot. Yeah. So people who work out in, like, uh, who are carpenters and the like, um, because they're more likely to be exposed to tetanus clostridium, they get a tetanus shot more frequently than the average. For, like, people who work outdoors and work with their hands, more likely to get cut, it's given every five years. And for um, everyone else who doesn't read the textbook, it's given every 10 years. Tell me you followed that.
That really does, especially being a phlebotomist. You better be very careful. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, well, uh, watch, watch. And I, I didn't say this, and I, now I can bring it up. Watch. Here, here's a B cell. Those receptors on the B cell are actually antibodies. Those are what they're looking for, the surface antibodies. So if you don't have those, then there's no way you can begin to make specific antibodies for the hepatitis B. Um, virus. Man, that sucks. You may want to think about doing something else, maybe getting into horticulture <laughs> or welding. Can I have that for the chicken pox test? Yes. Except that I, yeah. I don't have the receptors in the chicken pox test. No, that means <laughs> you, no. Qualified. Right, you can get it. Something else is going on with you that's very weird. I don't know. Don't get too close to her. <laughs> Tell me you followed that. So can I just show you something real quick? And then you can ambulate home. You, <laughs> you better look up. Um, there's a video called uh, uh, Immune Response and Anaphylaxis and Anaphylactic Shock. You got me? OK, so watch. Watch. Now I forgot what I was going to tell you. I forgot what I was going to tell you. What was I going to tell you? Oh, this is what I was going to tell you. Do you guys know who uh, uh, Ryan White is? No. Do you know who... Uh, oh, now I can't remember. Uh, what's his name? Arthur Ashe. No. For real? <laughs> Both of them died from um, AIDS. Arthur Ashe was a Wimbledon tennis champ, and he had a bad ticker later in life. So in order to save his life, they had to give him blood transfusions. Ryan White, the same thing. He had a um, uh, coagulation disorder, so they would have to give him blood routinely. But this is, watch. When they first started screening blood for um, potential AIDS, they were looking at the antibody. But in some people, you don't start producing antibodies for up to six months. So these people can be HIV positive and they won't have any antibodies floating, so they'll say this blood is good. And that's what they were giving to, gave to Ryan White and Arthur Ashe. Now, they actually check for the virus, the antigen. So that blood should be good. So that's why a lot of those people died from HIV who got blood transfusions. You don't know who those people are? Yeah, I bet you know, you, bet you know uh, who Beyonce is, don't you? <laughs> who is? Who's Beyonce? Yeah, whatever. What? No. That's what she does? Okay, well good. You know what? Look, I try to explain stuff to you, try to explain stuff to me. Yeah, she's on she's doing that on the run tour, huh? I got tickets. <laughs> 